doing very well. That's what happened there. Came out of gauge. It was all going too well. Right, we'll see if we can go again. Let's put some weights in the trucks to weigh it down. There we are. I hope you enjoyed that little trip round the railway. I apologise for uh, sending you flying, but I decided to reverse up and I knew that it would derail and it did, so I shouldn't have really done that. Uh, there is one good feature of this railway is, you're on the bridge now and I could actually move you out of the way I can actually move the whole bridge and see the railway corner point is about there where the milk bottle is uh, built that way so that I can still use it as a workshop at the same time but whenever I want to send the train round it's just easy, it's like a little transporter on wheels Bring it across. And you've got a functioning railway again. Now, I'm not sure what I did last time. I think I talked a bit in depth about the lathe, the Atlas lathe. So just take you over there. You're actually still held on to on uh, a truck at the moment. But it's making a handy camera mount. I've recently put all this on the lathe, bolted it up using quarter twenty screws and nuts and bolts. I actually drilled and tapped into here because it's like five mil steel angle. Drilled and tapped in there for the mountings. Up here, I made this collar on the lathe. If you can see that. Doesn't look completely straight, but I've got to tighten everything up. These want tightening up, and so does that, so it'll, it should bring it into line. Um, I plan to wire it up just to a battery for now. The main reason for powering the feed this way is uh, I'm not interested in screw cutting on this lathe. A lot of the guys on forums and things say, oh, you shouldn't be doing this this way but this is what I've come up with to get my feeds so I can just have a on these two wires that'll go down to a little control box variable speed so I can set it at one speed and that this shaft will be spinning all the time 
then you just that handle down engages it and the feed will go that way pull it out and the feed stops but it discontinues to spin I'll cover it back up I'll show you what I've done on this end because you may be thinking well if that shaft turning surely these gears are turning but well no they're not these two won't turn because I've taken a gear out of here so this this can all freely rotate I may even just loosen that one move we took tighten it up then this gear here can just freely rotate it's not going to go in it can't go that way because this gear is stopping it and shut them up so hopefully that will be a feed done when I uh, get that all wired up apologize for the mess I've just been mess about turning a little bit of plastic up just to see how the machine went and it, it went really well I just need to get this feed sorted out and then uh, hopefully I'll be able to do a video on that getting the feeds right just feeding across just gentle cuts not massively fast but uh, yeah this is what I've also been working on if you remember if you watched the 5 inch gauge steam loco Dougal it was sat on top of this it was actually a bit higher but I decided to cut this down put uh, two bars across I'm actually going to put these two cross members on somewhere like that and that'll give it a bit more strength there and also in that corner that corner and this corner and the plan is to put a piece of steel across there a piece across there to strengthen it up and then some I have a 25 mil or 30 mil angle one this side all the way down to that end one this side all the way down to that end and the idea is that a jack a car jack's going to sit in there and you can see the that is the actual rail there that the local used to sit on I want to put that above the car jack and have two two pieces of steel either side at an angle either side at an angle so that when you lift the car jack up this piece comes up and it's like a, a, a trolley lift and the whole idea is not to lift that, that's a lawnmower to lift that thing under there now there is a little shot on YouTube of this one going around the track um, it didn't have the body on but next time I'll put the track I'll uh, see if I can do a bit of a video on that going around the track for you so that's that so I've covered that here is the loco that was pulling those round uh, this is the first time I've actually run these little Peter Binney trucks and I'm really impressed with them yeah fair enough you can't reverse with them because they fall off but uh, they did a lap pulling the camera around and uh, I was quite impressed really impressed actually so what I might do is um, do I pull it round the other way or not? I don't, I'm not sure. But that is that. You can see me drilling the background. I've been doing a lot of drilling uh, recently, just drilling all the parts on that that thing there. Maybe in a couple of weeks, I've got to get some more steel, and I'll be a bit more progressive with it, and maybe even get a jack. It'll be ideal if. Uh, I'll just decide to sell the jack for about £15 because I will be straight in there. I don't want to spend lots of money on it. It's just a cheap little project. So far it's cost me, I'd say about 40 quid in steel. So uh, I'm trying to keep costs down and just do it do it the best I can. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. Obviously the rail's got to be low enough shift that box got to be low enough to line up with that track there which that is on that's where it lives but also it's got to go high enough to get in the boot of the car 
in the boot of the car it sits on that platform down here it sits on those rails there that angle line there that is probably what I use for the bottom of this and probably put some strengtheners all, all the way down it so it strengthens it all up but the idea is that uh, it's on, it's on caster wheels so you can easily maneuver it I will have to shift that toolbox maybe down a bit so I can get it in there but uh, yeah things are coming on kicking things about that's the shed I've still got some more work to do on that uh, I think the windows are in and obviously the loco is radio controlled it runs really well I think we'll do a couple more laps and then that'll be it for tonight I just came in for a quick quick video and also I've not played with my trains for a long time and I thought I'm gonna have a run so I just need to make sure that these tracks are lined up that one is and that one is so if they're not lined up it'll just jump off This one. For some reason the wheels keep moving on me. I may have to just put a dab of glue behind the wheel or something like that to stop. Uh, I thought the phone had died then but it hasn't. To stop um, the wheels moving because what's happening is there's the wheels and they're going in. I'm sorry about the noise that the loco makes but it's actually wired up with a radio control car a speed controller so I may change that in the future side view. Obviously I've got a set of points here a little signing loop which those two uh, big big train coaches are on but I can't take you down there in the camp with the camera because 
it's on my phone and it would uh, hit the wall because it is quite tight. But the loco does clear it. So I hope you enjoyed that little video and uh, thanks for watching, please subscribe, if you could like the video that would be really great and we'll see you next time, bye.